Hi, I'm Stacey Pollington and I'm a team manager working with the Rydale and Whitby Older Persons Community and Memory Mental Health Services. I was asked last year to be part of the Shar uh, Dementia Project and I was really excited about that for a number of reasons. Um, one of those being that it gave me the opportunity to work more closely with our GP colleagues and to try to improve the working relationships that we had at the time and try to um, remove some of the barriers that we were experiencing on both sides that were just making the day-to-day -day job more challenging and having no benefit to um, the people within our communities. So we know that there is an aging population in the UK and we also know that locally we have an increasingly older population because we are fortunate enough to live in a beautiful part of the world that tends to attract uh, retired individuals. What we know however is that the service investment is a big challenge for us and that means that we need to be more creative about how we address the needs of all the older people in our area and not just those with the greatest presenting needs and risks. Uh, I really believe that that job cannot be done by any single service in isolation and that it needs to be everybody's business. Um, another, another thing that I was interested in when I was asked to join the project is the kind of growing trend of changing household demographics and multi-generational households. Um, for me, the diagnosis of dementia is as critical for the person themselves as it is for the framework of family and loved ones that live around them and support them day to day. So this project presented an opportunity for me to be part of an approach that would allow us to support people through wider community systems and not just through a medicalised care process. So I've worked with elderly for the majority of my career and then had a little spate in practice nursing and realised dementia is always been where I've had my passion but there was never a role for it for somebody who was an adult nurse and this role presented itself at the right time really came for the interview, read what it was about and I just thought this is a group of people that actually want to improve the lifestyle in the community of people that have dementia. Yeah. Um, leading on from what I've done with the deprescribing, I could see that there were very frail, um, vulnerable people out there, possibly with dementia, possibly not, but we hadn't had previously had the time to get to the bottom of what was wrong with them and there may be undiagnosed problems that could be improved on. I felt that we could do some more work for these vulnerable people. Um, we identified as a practice that we wanted to be involved with this project. We wanted to essentially try and improve our dementia prevalence within the practice. We wanted to improve our communication between ourselves and our patients and make our clinicians more confident in, in discussing um, dementia with our patients. So the reason I wanted to get involved with the project initially was on a personal level because dementia has touched me as a person with my relatives and I've seen what a difference it can make to get a diagnosis to the family, not just to the person. And also as a practice manager, it's nice to be involved in a project that we can make a difference with. Being on reception, we're in a fortunate position to be able to see patients on a regular basis and it felt like it was empowering us to perhaps do something about it and contribute to the whole process of the change. It's important that we get the information right in the first place to make sure that we get the funding through so that we can provide these people with good quality care. I think it's really, really important. So I think what went well with this project is that there's been um, a really big culture change I think across all the staff in the in the Shah practices, I think we've um, we've always been comfortable with managing patients with long term conditions, um, and I think it's a recognition that dementia is just another one of those long term conditions. It's a comorbidity that requires um, early identification, proactive monitoring, and recognition and management of the terminal phase. We we managed to get people who weren't that keen to start with to start thinking dementia and having it in the back of your mind when you see people who might not be quite that with it, who might not quite have seemed to grasp what you're explaining, to bring them back, to do further tests, to ask other people. Okay. And perhaps the biggest thing that we've gained from the whole project was the introduction of our dementia care coordinator, who's really taken a lead on the matter and taken a lot of pressure off the GPs. 
um, knowing that there's someone who follows up the patient from the diagnosis and doing a lot of things that we as GPs just don't have time to do or not trained to do so. So it's helpful as a GP to perhaps um, initiate the conversation and give the diagnosis, but the uh, from a social uh, element of it and the ongoing support, the dementia care coordinator has made a huge difference in the care that we are able to deliver to our patients. I think communication has been really good throughout all the PCN and all the different practices, getting to know each individual and finding the areas that are struggling to get any sort of diagnosis, so nursing homes, um, it's been known that I've worked in nursing homes where you think, oh, well, that's just how they are, when actually, no, we need to know formally for medication purposes, to have the right reviews in place, so chasing up on things that actually doesn't need to be done by a GP, it can be done by somebody else and then that confirms actually you can get a lot more diagnosis by doing it that way. For me, it was the outcome of what happened after you'd picked up the diagnosis that, that was really helpful. Um, so we did get more patients with dementia, we did pick out more patients with dementia, but we were actually practically able to do something for In terms them. of the biggest impact of the project, I would say just having data. I think uh, Helena gathered real life information looking at what we were all doing as practices and we were able to benchmark ourselves against each other and others and uh, learn more about how to change our processes from each other. Uh, what we've understood really is that it's a process, not, not an event, uh, in terms of diagnosing dementia and similarly improvement is a process, not an event. Probably making connections with the right people, setting up having something where it is in place that you have a regular review with these independent people that might not necessarily be attached to your surgery. Top two is to ensure that everybody in the organisation understands that there are benefits in a diagnosis of dementia, if you have dementia, and make sure they, they can all tell you what those advantages are. Communicating well with your team. I think if you tell your team what the purpose of what they're doing is, it gets them all involved a lot better. It needs to not be down to just one person to try and lead and drive forward a project. You, you, you do have to have a leader, but everybody needs to be on board, everybody needs to have some understanding. So you need to invest time in trying to help everyone understand where you're going and how you're driving. One thing I would say is um, have confidence and don't be scared to make the diagnosis of dementia. Uh, and the other thing I would say is don't be scared to use the word dementia with patients. Ask them, are you worried about dementia? It's really difficult to only pick one thing to pass on to other primary care networks. But in the Dementia Project, the one thing that struck me was that every conversation mattered. So think about your wider team. Think about the receptionists and colleagues who answer the phone, all the way through to professionals who are offering more complex care and support. And don't forget to keep revisiting what you thought you heard at the beginning. Revisit what patients said mattered to them. And if you do that, then the changes that you make will add real value.